Good evening and welcome to Perspectives Daily. I'm Noel Okel. God will only forgive us if we forgive others without any resentment. That was a statement from the Pope today as he celebrated his morning Mass from Casa Santa Marta. Returning to his favorite theme of forgiveness, the Holy Father warned about the dangers of allowing ourselves to be enslaved by hatred and reminds us that the first requirement for us being pardoned by God is to recognize ourselves as sinners. It's not easy to forgive because animosity makes a nest in our hearts, but the accusation of ourselves, the Pope pointed out, is the first step towards forgiveness. And so it seems that the Pope will be back on the plane sooner rather than later. The Vatican has confirmed that the Pope will travel to Switzerland this coming June. Swiss Cardinal Kirk Koch told media that the papal visit is meant to help to commemorate the 70th anniversary of the founding of the World Council of Churches and to show the Catholic Church's support for the organization's ecumenical initiatives. The one-day program for the visit on June 21st is still being planned, but it is expected that the Pope will meet with the Swiss president, then visit the World Council of Churches headquarters for an ecumenical prayer service. The Pope will also celebrate Mass for Catholics in Geneva, but details are still forthcoming. Established in 1948, the World Council of Churches is an international organization of Christian churches that has a goal of fostering unity and fellowship and service and mission. Now, the Catholic Church is not a member, but cooperates with them on various programs. Washington, D.C.'s Cardinal, Cardinal Donald Wuerl, has issued a detailed pastoral plan to implement Pope Francis's Amoris Laetitia in his archdiocese. This plan is the first of its kind ever to be implemented at the parish level. In the 58-page pastoral plan entitled, Sharing in the Joy of Love and in Marriage and Family, The Cardinal says that Amoris Laetitia is called to compassionate accompaniment in helping all to experience the love and mercy of Christ. The Archdiocese has sent copies of the plan to all of its 139 parishes, and the Cardinal is encouraging all his priests to read the plan and to preach about it at all parish masses. Now, if you're not from the Washington Archdiocese but would like a copy of the plan, it is posted on their website listed below. In other news today, it looks like Blessed Paul VI will be declared a saint at the end of the Synod of Bishops this October. After mentioning the late Pope in his speech to the International Catholic Migration Commission today, Vatican Secretary of State Cardinal Paterlin confirmed to reporters that the canonization will take place at the end of the Synod, which is scheduled for October 3rd to the 28th. And although the Pope announced in February that he expects a canonization of Blessed Paul this year, He still hasn't formally signed the decree recognizing the miracle needed for the canonization, nor has an official date been set for the ceremony. Pope Paul VI was head of the Catholic Church from 1963 to 1978. And finally tonight, I'll leave you with these beautiful images of an act of love and mercy in action. Last Friday and completely unannounced, the Pope made a surprise visit to the mothers and their children and staff at the Casa de Leda, a group home for incarcerated women with small children, the first of its kind in Europe. Casa de Leda is a halfway house for mothers who have committed minor crimes and are still serving time in a way that allows them to be integrated back into society with the help of volunteers and community service work. The mothers talk to the Pope about the opportunities that come with being able to raise their children in the home. Even with limited freedom, they are allowed to accompany their children to school in the morning and pick them up in the afternoon while having the opportunity to learn new skills for a future job. At the end of the visit, the children welcome the Pope's gift of large Easter eggs and candies with shouts of joy. And that is all that we have time for today. Join us again tomorrow when I bring you more news and stories with the perspectives of a Catholic lens. I'm Noel Ogle, and thank you for joining us.